Hey everybody, it's Nick from Android Headlines, and today we're taking a look at the daytime shot quality between the Sony Xperia X Performance, Samsung Galaxy S7, the Xiaomi Mi 5, and the OnePlus 3. So our first test here is going to be testing to see which has the best distance detail when zoomed all the way in. Starting with the OnePlus 3, the colors are slightly muted and it has a bit of a warm tone to the overall picture. Exposure is absolutely perfect though. Details are excellent, but the image processing can be a tad heavy at times. Still, this doesn't detract from overall detail and you can quite easily make out all the detail on the pump house in the distance, including some of the faint lines where the windows and the door are on the south face. This thing is well over a mile away, just for reference, so you can tell that there's a lot of detail going on here in the shot. Even the foliage detail is excellent. You can make out the lines and the elephant ear leaves down here and other things like that. It's just a really good shot. Moving on to the Galaxy S7, the colors are slightly oversaturated, but it's definitely a more attractive image than it is distracting because of this. It is slightly overexposed though. If you take a look at the gravel down here, you can see there's quite a bit of detail loss going on versus the OnePlus 3, for instance. As we pointed out in the review and some other videos, the detail level on the Galaxy S7 when zooming in is a bit lacking, especially when you zoom into the pump house in the distance where you really can't make out any real details at all. It just looks like a house and that's about it. Even the foliage and stuff looks like a watercolor painting and there's not a whole lot of detail at all when you actually zoom into the photo. The Xperia X Performance has more accurate colors than the Galaxy S7, and the exposure is definitely excellent here. Check out all the gravel detail on the road and the general detail on the foliage. There's definitely quite a bit of image processing going on here, but it doesn't take away from the overall detail level of the shot. Distance detail is absolutely superb, as you should expect from a 23 megapixel sensor, and you can actually make out the windows and door on the south-facing section of the pump house very easily. There is quite a bit of over sharpening here to help bring in those extra details that the denoise filter takes away. And this honestly doesn't feel needed as it creates quite a few image artifacts and macro blocking going on throughout the shot. Lastly, we take a look at the Mi 5, which has a very warm hue. The colors are definitely the most muted of all four phones as well. Exposure is higher than the OnePlus 3, but not quite as high as the Galaxy S7 was with that gravel detail loss. Image processing is the least heavy and it results in the best looking detail on every single part of the image, from that pump house all the way in the background, to the leaves on the foliage around the area. Xiaomi has really made some amazing strides from previous generations in this regard, and this picture looks absolutely phenomenal, outside of that little color imbalance, of course. Our next shot is going to be testing the HDR capabilities of each phone to see which has the best high dynamic range mode. Starting with the Xperia Performance, this one's going to be way overexposed and it completely loses details, particularly on the wall in the back in this building. The sun is shining right on it and the high dynamic range should come in handy in this scenario, but it obviously doesn't do a great job of muting that. The colors are very washed out because of this overexposure and oddly enough the shutter seems to have been quite slow on this judging by the blurriness around the scene even though it's obviously bright sunlight. It does pick up some more shadow detail on the trees because of the overexposure but it loses so much everywhere that this is definitely a loss for the Xperia X performance. The Xiaomi Mi 5 is super saturated as you can tell moving from the Xperia showing some attractive but definitely unrealistic colors in the scene. Overall balance of this scene is great with the exception of that back wall which is a bit blown out but not nearly as overexposed as the Xperia. Details are excellent and show no signs of slow exposure or bracketing issues. The OnePlus 3 has the best exposure so far without a doubt. There's plenty of detail in the shadows of the trees and bushes, yet that wall glow has been toned down enough to actually slightly make out the cut edges between the rows of bricks near the top. The color isn't quite right on the wall, but it's definitely better than the last two phones for sure. And overall color balance is superb with tons of detail when you zoom in every single place in the image, including the leaves on the maple tree and even the needles on the pine tree further in the back. Lastly, we're taking a look at the Galaxy S7 and initially it's extremely difficult to tell the difference between this and the OnePlus 3. And for the most part, the overall balance is pretty much neck and neck with the OnePlus 3. However, the Galaxy S7 is the only phone to actually get the color on the building and the wall in the back here correct. This is not a white building, it's more of an ivory cream color, but it's a lot more blown out on the wall than the OnePlus 3 is, and the details are the worst of the bunch yet again when you zoom in. It's a tie here for balance between the OnePlus 3 and the S7, but the S7 wins in slight color accuracy, while the OnePlus 3 takes the cake in overall detail. Macro modes can be a lot of fun, so we'll be testing both the balance and the fine details on this upcoming macro shot. Starting with the Galaxy S7, clearly it had a hard time here deciding what to balance more. The light behind the wall, 
the light on the wall itself, or even the darker bug. Either way, this shot is way too underexposed. And of course, as you might expect at this point, the actual details when zoomed in aren't stellar. Although with a subject that takes up this much of the frame, you can still make out quite a bit of detail on the parts that aren't too dark. The OnePlus 3 is perfectly balanced here, not just in exposure, but also in colors. The wall color is absolutely correct, and the detail on the bug borders on insane. You can zoom in and not only make out the fine details on the wings here, but also the darker gray pattern on his back and the hairs on his legs because the exposure is so good. The Xperia X performance is very yellow and it got the color all wrong and it looks like it held the shutter open just a tad too long too as there's a slight blur to everything in the image. What's here is mostly great though, especially detail, which disappointingly given the megapixel count isn't as good as the OnePlus 3, but is pretty good overall and exhibits lots of fine detail in general. The Xiaomi Mi 5 does a much better job with color than the Xperia performance, but it's quite a bit underexposed, although not so much as the Galaxy S7 is. Details overall are better than the Xperia performance, but not quite as good as the OnePlus 3 here, giving this one a solid second place, but definitely not the win, as that's going to go to the OnePlus 3 without a doubt. Moving on to a moving subject. Moving subjects are common in photography, and with the advent of all sorts of new focusing methods, let's take a look at which one works the best. Starting with the Xperia X performance, this shot has a weird green hue to it, but the moving branch and flowers here are perfectly in focus. Zoom detail is absolutely superb, and you can even make out not only the details on the flowers themselves, but also the bits of pollen on each stamen. It's really quite incredible what they were able to pull out here. The Galaxy S7 shot is ever so slightly warm, but it's much more accurate than the Xperia by far. Focus is dead on accurate and has a more attractive bokeh than the Xperia. Fine detail isn't quite as good, but overall this shot looks really good. The Mi 5 came out slightly bluish, but nothing too bad. However, it completely missed the mark and focused on the wrong part of the image altogether, leaving this one in the dust for the shot. If you check out our video shootout between these same phones, you'll see that the Mi 5 has this same problem there too. For the OnePlus 3, the colors are dead on accurate here and the focusing is quite nice too, but it gets it a tad too low on the moving flowers and focuses closer to the branch rather than the moving tip of the bunch of flowers. Zoom detail is better than the S7 in the parts that are focused, but the lack of focus on the top section of the flower is going to put this one just ahead of the Mi 5 in third place. The Xperia X performance would have been the definite winner here if it weren't for that nasty color balance. So because of that, it's probably going to have to be a tie between the Xperia and the S7 here, just given the fact that we've got both a color balance and a little bit of a detail issue between the two. Although they both got that focusing perfectly, which is most important in this shot. Moving on to some shady areas, taking pictures in the shade during the day can oftentimes trick a camera into thinking it's far darker than it actually is. This particular setting is on a wreath underneath an overhang and it's going to help test the balance between ISO and shutter speed between all these cameras. The OnePlus 3's automatic mode shows a 250 ISO 130th of a second shutter speed for this and it's clear that 130th of a second is too slow to keep handshake from getting in the way here. Not only that, but it seems to have decided to focus on the spray behind the flowers here instead of the closest object in the scene. Details aren't horrendous, but the shot falls apart nearly instantly when zooming in at all. The Mi 5 is utilizing a slightly lower 235 ISO, but that same 130th of a second shutter as the OnePlus 3. The Mi 5 at least focused on the right things though, however that 130th of a second is still too slow for a good clean blur free shot. There's certainly more details here where we wanted them, but overall, regardless of the focus point, this shot is equally as mediocre as the OnePlus 3's shot. The intelligent auto mode on the Xperia X performance used a much lower 64 ISO, but that same slow 1 30th of a second shutter speed as the other two phones. Focus is better than the previous two as well, but the overall shot is blurrier for some reason it comes out looking the worst of the bunch. Samsung's larger sensor pays off big time here, utilizing a low 80 ISO plus that double speed 1 60th of a second shutter. The results are monumentally better and show the reasons that ISO should always be preferred over shutter speed when using a smartphone's camera by hand, regardless of optical image stabilization or not. 1 60th of a second shutter is probably about the slowest possible shutter to keep a blur free image, and the S7 wins by a landslide here because of it, with extra crisp leaves in the front and excellent overall detail on the spray to the side. You can't forget about that front facing camera, and selfies can be in many different situations. Although some manufacturers have opted for a wider angle lens than others to get not only you in the shot, but also the background as well. Starting with the OnePlus 3, the balance here is a tad bit blue and washed out, but overall it looks pretty decent. The focus is clearly on me rather than the background, which is the point of taking anything from the front facing camera anyway, and the overall details are excellent, so this is a good shot. It's clear right off the bat that the Xperia X Performance's camera is higher resolution than the others, 
but it gets that focus point all wrong. My hair seems to be slightly in focus near the front, but it's mostly grabbing the detail in the reeds in the background. The Xperia's camera is a wider angle than the others too, and it gets the colors and balance perfectly right, but without the correct focus, the shot matters less than these other advantages might give it in this particular situation. The Galaxy S7's image is ever so slightly washed out when comparing it to the Xperia's image, but it does a great job of focusing not just on me, but also the background at the same time. This long focal length provides a way not just to see the person in the selfie, but also to clearly view what's happening in the background. The overall lower megapixel count of this sensor makes things a bit watercolory though, but it's a solid shot that gets the right idea. Lastly, we're taking a look at the Xiaomi Mi 5, which is by far my personal favorite of the group, and the reasons for this are many. Colors and exposure levels are absolutely perfect with nice, deep, rich colors and a great overall exposure level. It's also got a gorgeous shallow depth of field that gives the background an almost DSL level bokeh to it, and a nice wide lens to capture the things behind me too. This one is going to be a tie between the S7 and the Mi 5 depending on what type of focus you like, but it's hard to argue with the aesthetics of the Mi 5 overall. Lastly, we're going to look at taking pictures underwater, where it's a hands down win for the Xperia without a doubt. Yes, the Galaxy S7 and Edge are just as waterproof as the Xperia X Performance. However, without the ability to turn the screen off and take pictures like you can with the Xperia, it's incredibly difficult or even impossible to get the shot you want. You could likely trick the S7 into doing these, but inherently, having a touchscreen means that water will cause random elements to be touched on the screen so long as it's wet. And in the end, it's the surefire certainty of actually being able to take shots underwater that gives the Xperia X Performance the advantage. We hope you enjoyed that video and will subscribe to us for more content. Visit us on your favorite social network and at androidheadlines.com for 24-7 Android news coverage. And don't forget to check out our other videos here too. Thanks for watching, and until next time.